I never saw an Oprah Winfrey sketch in my life until you two were <laughs> and they go, oh, one can play Stedman, one can play Oprah at the same time. And, no, that what SNL will say one can play Oprah and one can play Gail. Oh, they there you go. They won't have no Stedman. <laughs> but, yeah, man, hey, i put it to you this way. You don't necessarily know what you're walking into until you get there. And after a, a year, you're just blessed to be there. And then after a while, you want to shine. And then after a while, you're like, mm, all right, I get it. I'm ready. You know what I mean? Like, I'm ready. So either you're ready to go or you're ready to stay. But I think they have a hard time with the whole, you know, African-American thing. And just, you know, because they, they love the funny. They fall in love with the funny. But then you don't necessarily have anybody that can write your point of view. So it's up to you. So you go in the room and you try to hammer out something, and you you. In man. all fairness, though, it's up to you. It's up to you. White or black? Yeah, like, it's up no to you. Nobody was writing for me, right? And no one was writing for Sarah Silverman or David Tell or Laura Keitlinger. So, I, it, it don't like, as a white guy looking in, mm-hmm. like just fucking straight talk. Mm-hmm. It seems like wow. If I was black, sometimes I think it would be easier mm-hmm. to be and just blow the shit out of the water if it's ridiculous what I say. I'm just. Right. Just being honest with you, how mm-hmm. white people think. Mm-hmm. You go, well, how if I'm the black guy in SNL, mm-hmm. I can automatically I, right now I'm thinking of 40 characters I could play because I'm the black guy, right? And no one needs, and I could just snow these people into thinking like, man, what? What'd you say? What? Right? Like I would just fuck it. Like I think Tracy did that a lot. Like, man, you don't even know where I'm coming from. Right. Right. You gotta trust me. He lives in the sewer. Right. He <laughs> loves her. Right. He loves her in the sewer. Right. I was the same way. I was like, I'm, it's R. Kelly. It's R. Kelly. You don't know R. Kelly? And then it was just like, no. I'm like, he's big. He's huge. Then the next week, they'd be like, hey, can't you play Little John? And I'm like, Chappelle just did Little John all last year. Oh, but okay. SNL is always a year behind with who they recognize as right. worthy to do. So it's kind of frustrating for black people because you, you, you write somebody that's popular that'll cross over for pop culture, but they don't necessarily trust it. So unless you Tracy telling them to trust you, you know, who, they're not going to listen to finesse. They ain't even know my name half the season. They call me fitness. So it's just like, <laughs> <laughs> it seems like SNL is, it does seem to lag a bit pop culture wise. And then every once in a while, the stars line up where they absolutely get it completely right, but m- more so with political stuff. Like when the political stuff election on, year, it's way smarter than me. Absolutely, election that year. That shit's smarter than what I write. Like yeah. I can't write a debate between like Dennis Kucinich, mm-hmm. like two. I can't. They'll write a sketch between the like the seventh and eighth place finishers in the mm-hmm. Democratic National Convention, mm-hmm. and I'm like, I don't even know what fucking state this guy's from. Like, this is way over my head. But Al Franken apparently has him. Right, he knows who they are. I think I could write that type of stuff if I if I had put my mind to it. I was just lost. I had no clue when I was on SNL. I had no clue what I was doing. I would just show up like a robot and just want to be funny and want to be on TV. And then when I kind of finally started to get it. I was already off the show. So it's that's that's really my my three years on that show. Love it to the day I die. Loved everybody I work with. Love the experience. But I didn't get it till I left the show. You know what I mean? And I and trying to way. figure it out week after week when I was in the moment it was a it was a headache. I'd rather Don't go. Don't you think now if you went back you would die? I'd be a star. Yeah, I'd be a dominate. star because I know what they want, I know what they're looking for. And even if they said no, I wouldn't take it the way I took it back then. Because week after week, I had them coming up to me telling me why they didn't pick my sketch. You know, and that was just a tired conversation for me. Because sometimes, if it's not funny, it's not funny. But sometimes you know when you hit a home run. Yeah. And like you said, the stars line up and they still didn't pick it, which happens to everybody on yeah. the show. Everybody complains. But sometimes it would hit, it would hurt just as hard because you know you don't get that shot again until maybe another black star can host the show, which is another six shows down the road. You know who what I mean? Your, who were the hosts that were black when you were on? Queen Latifah, Janet Jackson, and Halle Berry. Did she bring the 45 King? Huh? Did she bring the 45 King? That was her DJ. Oh, no. Oh, no. you don't know? No. <laughs> yeah, her guy. Talking about La? Yeah, her, no. her DJ was the 40, like, Guru Head Premier. She had the 40, mm. the 45 King. She was good, though. All right, man. so, uh, Queen Latifah. Yep. Did you Janet say Halle Jackson. Huh? Janet Jackson. And Halle Berry. Those three? Al Sharpton. Reverend Al. Reverend Al. Friend of the show. Friend of more sports. He came on more sports. He, that guy would fucking do anything just to have fun. Al Lizza, 
I can't even do Al, but he's just, he's, he was I just love hanging him. out. Like, yeah. he, like his car was in the uh, studio, like waiting for him. Uh-huh. And we're like, could you just shoot these fake commercials? And he's like, sure. Yeah. And he just looks into the, uh, he looks into the uh, camera and goes, what kind of hair product do you use? <laughs> like anything we wrote, he would say, and he's like, I'm just having a good time. Yeah. Al is a good dude, man. When you saw a black host on the board, for those of you at home, there's a, there's a big, there's a board with like, thumbtacks and there, there'll be hosts up you know some are cemented in because mm-hmm. they got premieres and movies and stuff coming out mm-hmm. when you see a black name go up on the board mm-hmm. you start at the time i mean mm-hmm. are you generating more content because you know your odds are better of getting on because of the black host mm-hmm. and it's different because you have people saying hey i got an idea for you and you're like really so you know it's different you see a black host you get excited now, it's really host. bad if you see a black host and you get squeezed out of the show. And you're like, man, I can't even get on the Janet Jackson show. But you when Janet think, Jackson yeah. came on, I was in like four sketches. So I was happy. You would think a black host, I would think a black mm-hmm. host would sort of go to bat for you, too. Because you have sens- your sensibilities are more similar than, the, than just the nerdy comic book guy that I lives was, with his parents on the Upper East Side that's white. Like Janet Jackson in the room with Lauren goes, well, I thought this was, I, yeah. you know, I just thought it was funny. I'm going to keep it really real, son. I will have every black host, and sometimes, you know, different hosts, didn't matter what color. I will have some people come up to me and say, man, I really love your sketch. I wanted to do it, but, ah. And then I will have somebody from the show, like, you know, Hig or, you know, come up to me and, and say, yeah, um, they didn't, they, they, they liked it, but they didn't want to do it. So I'd be confused. I, and you can't keep going back and forth and saying, well, he said you didn't want Shit's dead. Yeah, it's dead. Either really, way, it's not going to get not on. Like so Jesus why is bringing yeah. Lazarus back to life? So let it's it go, dead. man. It's dead. Finesse Mitchell was all about the after party. Really? Yeah, man. I loved him. Horatio Sands was in charge of all our after after parties. And back in, when I was there, they was banging. I'm not going to even lie. And everybody came to him. So I kind of look forward more he, so to the after party and so waving goodnight. I didn't know that Horatio Sands was that was that. He fun. was the ticket dude. He was the dude that would tell people what the after after was, and he never let people down. You really? Know what I mean? And they and they said as soon as he left, I said, Keenan, how the after are? Oh, he's man, I don't go to him no more. It ain't the same. So, you know, I got you know SNL was a good time, man. I and I was blessed to have that opportunity. I say what's up to all them cats. I just did a show with Jay Mo- uh, Jay Farrell, you know. The other day, he's at, a kid that does uh, Denzel. Yeah, he's about to do uh, Obama, I think. Hopefully, this is this year. Fred Armisen is leaving, I think, or not going to do it. So this is Jay's year, and so now you know I go around the country touring, doing uh, my thing. What now date? On, you got October dates? I got an October date at Phoenix Stand Up Live, okay. Scottsdale, Phoenix. You ready? October fourth, one night only. That's a Thursday, eight thirty p.m. Get your tickets. Finesse Mitchell and friends. How come only one night? One night. I'm going in just to test the market because I never played it. So sometimes what I like to do is test go. Test the market? I'm telling you, That's man. That's the whitest shit I ever heard in my That's life. That's what I do, man. We're going to get, get a your... uh, focus group up and running. Finesse will come in for a night. We'll see how it see, translates through our urban audience. Here's the deal, though. You go in. See, you, Jay Moore. You can go in and get your big-time corporate deals. I mean, corporate gigs. And then you can do your improvs and da-da-da-da. Me... I said, let me go in, let me get an off night, let me get the door, and let me see what I can do because y'all are lie and fudge the numbers, and I don't know what I did on a Thursday through Sunday. So let me see what I can yeah. do on a Thursday. Give me the door. That's and, a good room. And Joel, uh, Joel, Joel, will do, do, off, bak, yeah, baka, baka. he'll do right by you. You got to just hit that radio, bro. Yeah. Isn't Hello, it- radio podcast. <laughs> Isn't it amazing how much we all got to do radio? At this you would just because yep. you would think like you just go to a town, there's a comedy club, and they go, "Oh, Finesse Mitchell is here. We should go. It'll be fun." They don't. They no one has any idea. The comedy club evaporates the minute they walk out the door of the comedy club, and yep. they don't even know the comedy club's in the town. Yep. Until you go on Tim and Willie, right? You should go. You got to go on Tim and Willie. It's Who's Tim Western, and Willie? It's a country western station. Those, in what's in one market? In Phoenix. And really? I, you will sell more tickets. With those two hillbillies, then you'll sell, and, and they're fun. So if I hit them up and Jay Moore said, I should you come tell, on your show. You say, Jay told me I need to go on Tim and Willie, and I'll, I'll text Joel now if you want and say, All make right. sure you put finesse on Tim and Willie. Cool. Those are good dudes, man. And cool. th- And if you're friendly with them, you'll mm-hmm. have a friend for a decade. They'll, cool. they'll always have you come through. All right. I'm so, going to do it. So you send in your tape. It gets down to 16 
a is down to eight. Who were some brothers that were on the list that didn't make it? Where you were surprised they didn't make it? I mean, in a complimentary way. Were you? I mean, like, you know, D Ray was funny. Yeah. J B Smooth was hilarious. They're probably scared of D Ray. Probably, you know. D Ray doesn't look like he's going to fit in the company mold. D Ray looked like he had been. He would have been on that show for at least three or four months. And say, man, fuck you. Exactly. Yeah. You know. In a very JB would have played the game. I was J. on that intramural. JB would have played the game. Were you on the basketball team with us and uh-uh. Chelsea Pierce? Uh-uh. JB was out there trying to dribble between his legs. I love over. JB Smooth. Turnover Central. That's my dude. We just hung out last night. I don't know where we were, but. <laughs> last night? <laughs> last night. You fucking alcoholic. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. JB, <laughs> we went to dinner. <laughs> Maybe you should night. stop drinking. <laughs> we just hung out last night. I don't know where we were. That's what you just said. <laughs> I know. We just hung out last night. Yeah, we went to a restaurant opening premiere. You, JB. Yeah. Uh, D-Ray. So basically everybody that was on that, con- Tony Rock's breath. <laughs> everybody that was on that conference call wound up in the final eight. Like, it was like, yeah, the- it was, um, well, Kevin Hart wasn't there. He's not hurting for anything. He's doing God great right now. Damn, he's funny. Is, isn't he just, Blowing up the he's like people. If you're listening, I'm just as funny as Kevin Hart. You hear me coming to your city? Taller. You gotta go. You gotta go check me out. And I just, big defensive back muscles. I just finished my one man one hour comedy special called One Man Monster. I shot right. it in Atlanta. I'm so excited about okay. it. Okay, I, I got to talk to you about this. Okay, because I'm sure I know your stand up. I've mm-hmm. known you a long time from the Boston Comedy Club. Mm-hmm. And I know how funny you are, mm-hmm. but the pictures of that shit on your website look like a Halloween catalog. <laughs> with the, with the, you're in the like the pirate costume. Yeah. yeah, you're in a tux, you're in a straight jacket, and then you're using like the, uh, the, pi- the pirate with like a yeah. fake bird on your shoulder, yeah. like you're in that LL Cool J movie yeah. on the boat. Somebody asked me. And I'm like, what kind oh. of one man show is this? Is this the, like the, uh, you know that store Oz? Yeah. A-A-A-H-S, where they sell all the Halloween shit? Mm-hmm. Party mm-hmm. City did your, did your one man show? I'm- when I tell you, when you see it, you're going to be like, dang, Finesse really went in. You're proud but of it. the promo, yeah, I'm, I'm really I'm proud, proud of it. it. The promo of it, though, is, you know, just me being all types of funny characters. So it's just me on stage doing, doing stand up. When you see it, you're going to be like, yo, I didn't know dude was that funny. Cause I didn't, you know, my last special was back in 2006, uh, called Snap Famous. You guys can go to finessemitchell.com. And get snap famous, but this new one, it's gonna be pretty good, Jay. You're gonna you're gonna be proud of your boy. And uh, make sure you get if you want to go to Amazon through the Jay Moore link, get Finesse's book. Your girlfriends only know so much. Did you know I was an author? Did you know I did? I that? did not know until I did a little, uh, a little homework research. on Finesse, Lord Finesse Mitchell, Finesse yeah. for President, yes, Finesse right. the Great. <laughs> I was writing for Essence Magazine a long time. I had the first relationship book for a comic, other than he's. Other than he's just not that into you. Um, I sent my book to Steve Harvey, and a year later, he came out with Act Like a Woman, Think Like a Man. What up, Steve? Anyway, so, uh, yeah, he he blew up off of that. But I I have a very funny relationship book. Wait, you were writing for Essence Magazine? Yes, had my own column, monthly. And that was a relationship column? Yep. And then you wrote a book? Your girlfriends only know so much. And then you shared that book with Steve Harvey. Absolutely. And then Steve Harvey comes out with a similar book. A year and a half later. Was any of the material over No, that? you want to know what? I, I nev- I'm going to be honest. I never read his book. I never read it. I didn't want to read it and be like, man, I was already kind of hurt enough that I knew his book was going to blow up because he had the radio behind him and he was nephew already Nephew Tommy syndicated. was pushing it. Yeah, once you got Nephew Tommy... <laughs> what else you need, brother? <laughs> I like, Steve Harvey's one of those, uh, guys, I like when black guys have, uh, really weird wigs and shit, and uh-huh. then they finally realize it's cool to be bald. Yes. And then all of a sudden they're just fucking bald, like Steve Harvey. Like yes. when MJ had the receding hairline. Yes. And then MJ was like, fuck this, I'm bald MJ. I'm 23 right. is bald. Right. Right. I'm not going out like, I remember, like, uh, fucking I, Gordon from Sesame Street. <laughs> St- Cedric Entertainer told us all a story one day how Steve did some city and he had bombed. But I think it was his home city. I forgot what city it was. And Cleveland, he, I think he's from. He's from. Well, no, I think this this happened down in Texas. I okay. may have information wrong, but apparently he got so frustrated he came off stage and took his wig off. It was a, it man, I out. told you get my funny wig. <laughs> this is my this is my sound check wig. Yeah. He took his wig off. He took his wig off. He was so frustrated. 
Black so, people wear a lot of wigs. Black uh, women wear wigs. That's the style now, man. They call lace fronts. <laughs> yeah, but if a, call. if a white woman showed up at work with a wig, everyone would whisper like, I think she's sick. Well, white she's women have well. fusion, right? They have extensions fused into their regular ha- hair so it looks fuller. Right. But they don't make a lot of fake hair that you can fuse into black women's hair. So they got to go with the whole wig. I thought that was the whole game. Like, girl, my tracks is messed up on my weave. Well, I thought that was weave, the whole thing, like women a, getting their hair done. A weave is are pieces of hair.